Mississippi, then you're called a Mississippian. And if you live in Philippi, they call you a Philippian. It's also a letter written by Paul, and we are going to read it all. Thankfully, it's pretty small, so come along with me and read Philippians. Good evening, friends. This is Emily Elephant. And Sam the Turtle. With the nightly news. That's the news. Nightly. What's the news, Sam? Peace and joy and gentleness. But not gentleness like a holding an egg in your claw. Gentleness with each other in the family of a god. That's right, Carlo. And we're supposed to give all our worries to God, and he will give us his peace. That's the opposite of worry. So, Emily. Yes, Sam? If I tell God about all my troubles and ask him for the things I need, will he make all my troubles go away and give me everything I asked for? I'd like to say yes. It'd be fun to say yes, but that's not what Paul teaches. Paul says what's so amazing and hard to understand about the peace God gives us is that we can have it even in the middle of trouble. Even when we don't have the things we've asked for. Wow, that's amazing. If what we really want is peace, Paul says God can give it to us no matter what's going on. That was a really great summary, guys. The world says peace and joy and happiness come when all your problems are solved and you have everything you want. Or when you ignore your problems and go on an expensive vacation. But God says peace and joy and happiness come from having just one thing, a relationship with Him. That's all we need to be happy. Okay, we need to keep going. Let's read the Bible together. Who can read chapter 4, verses 8 and 9? According to my calculations, it is the turn of the large gray one. Is it me? Is he talking about me? Sam, you're small and green. Elephants are large and gray. It's my turn to read. <clears throat> Brothers, continue to think about the things that are good and worthy of praise. Think about the things that are true and honorable and right and pure and beautiful and respected. And do what you learned and received from me. Do what I told you and what you saw me do. And the God who gives peace will be with you. Verse 8 is a really famous verse. Think about the things that are good and worthy of praise. Think about the things that are true and honorable and right and pure and beautiful and respected. So what does Paul mean? Does he mean we can't think about anything bad or sad? Yeah, like if terrible things are happening somewhere else in the world, are we supposed to not think about it? Just ignore it? Or if something bad happens to my friend and they want to tell me about it, do I say, no, it is not right and pure and beautiful? This does not seem a very kind. Good questions. Some people have wondered if this instruction means we can only think about the good things that happen and we have to ignore the bad stuff. Or we can only hear stories about happy, happy things, never sad things. To understand what Paul means here, we need to back up and remember what he's been talking about in this part of his letter. Noodles? Oh, no. That was me talking about noodles. Paul talked about learning how to live by watching the apostles and doing what they do. That's all right. And by not doing the bad things they see other people do in the Philippi. So maybe this is more about how to live, who to watch, and who to learn from? That sounds like it makes more sense. But how do we know if we've got it right? Good question. Paul might give us a clue in the very next verse. Uh, Emily, read verse 9 one more time. Okay. And do what you learned and received from me. Do what I told you and what you saw me do. And the God who gives peace will be with you. He's talking about how to live, not just what to think about. This whole section of Philippians is about how we should live, about what should come out of our lives. When you're looking for examples for how to live as a follower of Jesus, look for the good examples and the good teaching, the teaching that is true and honorable, right and pure and beautiful. That's how you should live, and it's those examples that should fill your minds. Hmm. So if there are bad things happening to people, I don't have to ignore them. No, we should never ignore the bad things happening to others, especially if we can do something about it. Hmm. What if I'm reading a book or watching a movie and people in the movie are doing bad stuff? 
What would Paul say about that? Really good question. What is the movie saying about those bad things? Is the movie saying, this is not a good way to live. Look, it leads to trouble. Or is the movie saying, this is a good way to live. Doing bad things will make you happy. I see what you're saying. Is the movie holding up the bad things as an example of how to live or as an example of how not to live? That's right. Stories about characters doing bad things have been used for thousands of years to teach us how to be good. But there are also stories that show bad things and actually make the bad things look good. So Paul is telling us to be careful what we put in our minds. It's not bad to hear about bad things unless the bad things are being called good. There you go. Some people say Christians should never hear bad news. We should only hear stories about good things happening. But we don't need to avoid news or stories or books or movies where bad things happen as long as the bad things are considered bad. The problem comes when we fill our minds with stories where bad things are called good and good things are called bad. See, how can we live good lives like Jesus lived if our brains are full of a bad as a good and a good as a bad? Think about the things that are good and worthy of praise. Think about the things that are true and honorable and right and pure and beautiful and respected. Paul isn't saying we should ignore bad things, but he is saying ignore the people who want to tell you bad things are good. See you next time.